gentlemen, Pamela Hall, she was born in England to Jamaican parents. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go online and speak to her. Yes. Yes, Pamela. Hello, Lagazi. Big energy, man. Blessings, blessings. Wow, go on. How are you doing? Good enough. Even time. We give thanks. We give thanks. How, how, how is the vibe like in Jamaica right now? The vibe is nice. Um, of course, everything not perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, there's nowhere is perfect. Mm -hmm. But very, very nice vibe. And I'm getting a lot of food. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. But, Pamela, you talk to us. Um, as I put out the flyer that I was going to talk to you, a lot of people were kind of throwing in, you know, like good vibes in terms of how golden... Your, your your voice look like your voice sound like and all that. You were sixty eight years, and you still recorded because y y your brand new song featured Muta Baroka. You understand me, um, and all that. What exactly is keeping you and still keeping the voice so strong up until this time? So before I point to that, let me say. Hello to Ghana. Big up Ghana, big up Africa, and Africans all over the world. Okay. Um, and all other listeners. Mm -hmm. Big up. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, as I always say when I'm asked that question, it's just love. I love music. And I try my best to keep myself in good health so I can sing. Because when they're not healthy, it don't seem so good. So I do my best to take care of myself to, so I can do what I love. All right. So, so how how do you do that? In is it is it the type of food you eat or the type of fruit you consume? You know, what is keeping the voice? Because the voice sounds like the same from them time there till now. Well, yeah, I, I eat a fair balance. I'm not vegetarian, but I'm, I eat mostly vegetarian. And I also keep a good frame of mind. So that's very important as well. You stay balanced. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. 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 All right. So let's step back to the UK where you were born, you know, to Jamaican parents. How was it like? Who, who, who was your mother? Who was your father? And how was life like in the UK, you know, at a very tender age? Well, both my parents have passed on. Enough love to you, both mommy and daddy. Mommy, Merkel, mm -hmm. daddy, Ashley. Um, it was, how can I put it? Very close. <laughs> yeah. And there were five of us. Five of you. And yeah, we played with each other a lot. We interacted with each other mm -hmm. a lot. I didn't go to go to school when I was in England. Didn't start school till I came to Jamaica. But was there any I reason also, why? Was there any reason why you didn't start school in the UK, but you decided to go to Jamaica before starting school? Well, my parents didn't want us to grow up in a racist situation. Oh, okay. And they wanted us to be more among our people. Mm -hmm. So that was their main reason for bringing us back to Jamaica, bringing us to Jamaica. My eldest brother was actually born in Jamaica, but he went to England when he was very small. So mm -hmm. all of us, you know, came back to Jamaica. And I'm very, very glad that we did come to Jamaica. Now, I am coming. Um, before coming to Jamaica, I would like to know from you, how, how was life like in the, you know, 
in England. How was it like? Do you remember anything, you know, as a young child? Yeah. I have a long memory. I remember a lot. I probably have a long memory. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I remember us playing in the bomb ruins. Mm -hmm. And when I look back, I thought, I think, no, my God. That was dangerous. <laughs> mm -hmm. We used to go in the bomb ruins and play every day. And I remember winter time. Mm -hmm. In, in the snow, playing, having snowman and snow, you know, snow fights and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I remember, one thing I can remember, I brought my mom, bought me this big doll because of that doll. Okay. And within an hour, I put the doll in the bath to give them a bath. In, mm -hmm. Into a Probably to put them, give them a bath. And that was the end of poor Dolly. Wow. Dolly <laughs> 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 yeah, man. Yeah, man. So at, at what age was that? Um, and I would like to know which age was you before moving from um England to Jamaica? Four. Four years old. You were four years old. And I have a lot, lots of memories, fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kent Road. So, so you were four years old in the UK and you were still not in school until you moved to Jamaica. Right. Yeah, man. All right. So let's talk about Jamaica now. Life in Jamaica. Schooling started. Where did you go to? Well, when I started school, I was living in a place called Vineyard Town in mm -hmm. Kingston. Mm -hmm. And I went to a nursing school. My brother and myself went to a nursing school, and it was right on our road, just a few doors down. So we just walked to school. We didn't need any parental accompaniment or anything else. Walked to school. And it was um, the head, this person who owned the school was Miss Morris. That was her name, Miss Morris. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those days were fun. But <laughs> I remember one day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I still, I still, I have to apologize to my brother right now. Oh God! Oh God! Hey. <laughs> 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 I don't remember what he did wrong, mm -hmm. but he did something wrong. Mm -hmm. And the teacher had mm -hmm. forgotten about it. But well, I was a little informer, so I reminded them that my brother had done whatever it was. He had done something wrong. You mean you, he, you, you informed on your brother? <laughs> yeah, I informed on him. Easy. <laughs> and he was severely punished. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> Sorry, Danny. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> so, exactly 11 minutes got into the R2 here on Assassin Radio. And trust me, Pam Ho just said that she informed on, you know, her brother. <laughs> So now she's taking this opportunity to apologize to the brother, Danny. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. As I see, we are, the, we are the voice of the land. So I know Danny will accept it in good faith. Amazing. <laughs> now, how did music start with you? Well, um, I used to love singing in love music and I used to actually... When I was back in England, I had a tiny little piano and I used to pick out melodies and stuff. And I used to actually sing for people when we all had visitors. I would sing, perform for them. Now, now so, listen, before you moved from UK to Jamaica, you were four years. So I would like to know yeah. between the age of one, two, three, four, you can sing already? Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, my, my father told me that when I was like one and a half, but apparently I spoke early. Mm-hmm. And he said, I used to sing this song. Love and marriage, love and marriage, go together like a horse and carriage. And I'm not cool yet. Wow. So, yeah. The love was always there. Wow. So in Jamaica now, starting music, how was it like? Let us know the historical facts. Okay, well, I used to sing before even doing any singing at school or so. My sister, mm-hmm. Audrey Hart, at the lady who sings one dance, one dance, just for two. Yeah. That's a sister Audrey. We used to put on little concerts on the steps in mm-hmm. Vineto. Now people would come mm-hmm. to listen to us. So we started performing, you know, you know, all the shows you might say. And we would all sing together as well sometimes. Mm-hmm. And then now uh, at primary school, I'd sing sometimes, go up and sing. I don't think I ever sang alone though. I'd sing with other people. And maybe one other person. I never had the nerve to go up and sing alone. Mm-hmm. And in church now, would perform in plays and sing and that kind of thing. That's that's in in on up to let me see now. Yeah, up to primary school is in the teenage years now. I was in the church choir, and I used to be in a a trio of okay. females. So I used to perform, I guess, really, that's really, this is really interesting, mm-hmm. looking back. Yeah, we used to sing in church. And we were all in the choir as well. Al Danny was in the choir. Your brother Danny, that you informed on him, was in the choir as well? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at that time, Audrey, you know, Audrey had gone back. England. Oh, Audrey, okay. Gone back to England, all right. Yeah, because her, 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 our parents were here. Okay. And our grand aunt, she took care of us, Auntie Katie. Okay. Gentle, gentle soul. Blessings. Yeah, man. So I'm doing all this singing sing, and at high school now. But mm-hmm. we finished with singing. And then it's posting activity also. I'll be under the tree or during lunchtime with my friends. Mm-hmm. What doing what singing? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. So so um h- how did your career start? You were singing in church, all right, being in the church choir, singing in high schools, you know, at you know, lunchtime, you gather your friends, sing for them and all that. How did your career start in terms of singing? Okay, I was at the Glean about this time. <clears throat> and I used to just, I used to go to the canteen every day for breakfast. But we just run out of the house without eating anything, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'd be in the canteen and this guy would come in singing. Mm-hmm. And I could hear that he could sing, so we got to talk in about music. So that was Woody Orville Wood. And he introduced me to several other people in the music. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, Tina Stewart, you know Tina Stewart? Yeah. I know Tina, Tina Stewart. Stewart. Yeah, man. Yes. <clears throat> yes. So he's, pardon me. <clears throat> That's why I must need chicken. I eat chicken about three days ago. And this is what is happening to me. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, um, Tina now <laughs> had a girlfriend at the Gleaner. Okay. And at the same time, they used to live in my area as well. We're living very close, just like a five minute walk. 
So, wow. but I'm talking about music can sing, and then and then now uh, Tina and I did a song together. Mm -hmm. it, that was the first song. You should never do that. A cover of um, the Daylight song. Mm -hmm. So that was the start. And then I did my first solo song with Willie Lindo. I think that was the first um, solo song I did. But I also did two solo songs with a guy named Rupert Cunningham. Mm -hmm. Hi, Rupert. Hi, Willie. Boy, Willie and I had a long talk that day, and I would laugh to the middle of the day. So those are the, the first people that I did. All right. So, so I would like to know this. In terms of you coming up, you know, let's talk about recordings in the mid seventies, where you used to be backing, you know, vocalists, you know, for Jimmy Cliff, Judy Mowat, Barry Simon, Dennis Brown, and the great Peter Touch. You understand me? I I would like to know meeting all these artists in terms of you, you know, um, you know, providing service to them in terms of you backing being back in vocalist. How was it like? And who even introduced you to them? Well, at, <clears throat> at the same time, alongside singing lead, mm -hmm. I also started to do background sessions. Okay. And I guess people would hear what I, what I did. Mm -hmm. I said, who's that? <laughs> yeah, I want to work with her too, you know? So... I was working with all these big names and they always showed me a lot of respect. Okay. You know? And I mean, I would arrange the harmonies some of the time, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they just, yeah, yeah, you, we, we understand that you can do it. So, yeah, so it just got more and more and more. Wow. Wow. So, so, um, you know, Doing harmonies on, on those songs and all that kind of thing, you know, we're talking about Jimmy Cliff. We're talking about the great Peter Touch, you know, you know, and all that. Did you meet them in person? And how was the relationship like, you know, between you and them? Yeah, yeah, I met them all. Um, mutual respect. Co-workers, mutual respect. Mutual respect. Mutual respect. You know what I mean? That's the vibe. Mutual respect and love. Mutual respect and love. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, how how are the studios, you know, sections like those days? You providing oh, harmonies. Those days. Mm -hmm. It um it took like okay, I've got to the studio mm -hmm. and somebody else is doing something. Mm -hmm. Like horn guys playing or a keyboard player or whatever. And we are somewhere else. Some of us we will just sit. And we chat. And we laugh. It's pure fun times, pure joke. Then you know, I do my thing. And then when I finish working, it might be more of the same, pure chatting and laughing and that kind of thing. It's a little different now, you know. People do so much work now and their computers and so on. We don't have so much camaraderie together, mm -hmm. you know, in the same space as before. But when we do, we are, oh, we are so happy. The, vice, the, the vibe is always so very, very nice. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are not on the Facebook Live, please make sure you step on the Facebook Live right now. Easy. On Asase995 Facebook Live. Easy. You can see the beautiful Palm Hall. Easy. Glowing at the age of 68 years. Easy. Her voice still sounds sweet. Easy. A lot of people telling me the legacy, I wonder. What is keeping her voice? She has spoken about that already. Now, to my people them inside Kumasi, on 
98.5, Cape Coast 100.3, and the Northern Region Tamale 99.7. I want you to send in your questions either via WhatsApp, you understand me, and let me read it out to Pam Ho. WhatsApp 0200000995 is the WhatsApp number. You can send in your questions, and I'm going to do justice to that. You understand me? Yeah, man. Everything is everything, and everything is all right. My name is King Lagazi. Pam Ho. Yeah. Yes, I. <laughs> so, tell me which song shot you into fame. Um, is it the first really popular song I had in Jamaica was actually a duet. Mm -hmm. Woody, the same person that I met at the cleaner company who used to walk into the canteen singing. We did a song called Book of Life. Book of and Life. Was, yeah, it was really very popular in Jamaica in the 70s. And people still talk to me about that song. What about the 1986 um, single? Dear Boopsy. Yeah, yes, that. <laughs> yeah. It top yeah, all, that one, right? It top all the charts, you know, in the UK and all that. Yeah, that was that was a big one. Um, and I went to England and you know did shows and lots of interviews and stuff. That was quite exciting. Yeah, wow. That was the that song was written by. The Troublemaker, mm -hmm. Lloyd Loving Bear. Wow. You know Lloyd Loving Bear? Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Bear Trouble Dad. <laughs> Easy. Wow. So, let's say, Dear Boopsy now, in 1986, shutting you into fame, topping the charts in the UK, you going to UK, doing all those wonderful interviews and all that. How was the vibe like? Um, did that end you maybe touring maybe Africa or Europe or the Americas or, you know, how how was it like in terms of that particular break? No tours right then. Just the excitement and the shows in England shows in England and the interviews and stuff. And kind of put in the spotlight on me. Didn't really have the links. Mm -hmm. Well, I still want some links, you know. They still need some Africa link. Okay. As long as you know not tell me some more techno joke, mm -hmm. I will come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, 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 all, yeah. so, so all this while, you never tour Africa yet? You never perform in Africa yet? I have, I, I have performed in Kenya. Hail up Kenya. All right. All my Kenyan people, big up. And I went to South Africa once. Okay. Not, not to perform. I went to represent the, the Musicians Union. They had a conference. Okay. But I still did a little jamming, you know? Definitely. Definitely. So, so in terms of um, Love Us Rock now, you understand me, um, being so hard in the UK and all that, you know, you 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 being apart from from the word go, you know, and all that. How what exactly what exactly will you say about lovers from the UK? Lovers are nice, man. Lovers are nice. I love my British artists. I love my British lovers and artists. I spend a special shout out to them, you know? Yeah, man. They are represent. And of course, the more rootsy bands out of England. Yeah, them up. Definitely. Still, still, still falls still as one, you know? And in the year 1990, you had to feel in for Judy Mowat. Being, and, and then you, you, you feel in for her in terms of you being part of the I3s. Rita Marley and Marcia Graphics. How was that experience like? It was nice. It was nice working with these excellent singers, you know. 
And I've worked, I've, I've participated, I've done how many for each and every one of the ICs separately, mm -hmm. differently. But it's just, it's just fun. It's fun working with them. Different kind of vibe, you know? Performing together, um, did you, uh, did you and, 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 and Marcia alongside Arita record any song together in a time of you being part, you know, with them? No, I just did four with them. There's one thing that I did. Mm -hmm. um, who was it? I don't know if it was Judy, me and Marcia. In the video, Rise Up, for the 1998 World Cup. Okay. When, when had qualified. And we had a big song with a lot of artists and so. Mm -hmm. Well, I sang with them as part of the ICP. But we never really recorded anything together. All right. But working with them was fun, right? Yeah, man. Big, 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 big fun. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking to Pamela Ho. On Asasi Radio. Easy. On the art settings, my name is King Lagazi. And trust me, we're taking it easy. You understand me? Nice and slow. We don't rush nothing. Easy. It's Sunday morning. Easy like Sunday morning. <laughs> Definitely. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> now, I would like to know from you. Those days in Jamaica, being a background singer and also backing all these big artists in terms of um, the Jimmy Cleaves, the Peter Torch, you know, um, doing that alongside your sister Audrey and all that. Let me know whether there were any sound systems that you associated, you know, with that maybe you go and sing on them. I mean, when life system, when sound system was with live artists where they go in and dance and sing. I've never done that. Not that I can recall. So <laughs> hardly. Wow, wow. You can record nothing. I think, no. I, let me see. No. Mm -mm. Easy. I've done, I've done a dub here and there. I've done you know, dub play. Okay. I don't ask me who. I hear you ask this. I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, all right. So you, you, you've, you, you have recorded dub play for sound systems, but you've never gone on a live sound system before to go sing and perform in terms of those days, like how, you know, um, the, let's say the Stone Love, has got his live artists, the Kilimanjaros, have their live artists and all that. You were not part of any of them, right? No, no. All right. Was it because you were a female and around that time it was too hardcore that it was um, like a male dominant? Quite possibly. Because I haven't really seen many female artists. Doing much of that either. Certainly back then, not much, you know? Okay. All right. So around that time now, who were some of your peers that maybe you rock shoulders with? You know, you can say, oh, that is my class. I'm 68 years young now. This is my classmate when I was growing up or when I was active doing up and down, running up and down music. Who were some of your peers? Oh, well... They can learn this, all the ICs, of course. Fruits can go. Luciana is long, yeah, younger. All that, but all of those younger artists as well. I've brought a lot of those younger artists. See them everywhere. Hi, hello, hug, all that, you know. Um, but in terms of the ladies, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, Cynthia Slash is one. Okay. And as I said, each of the ice trees. Mm -hmm. And well, why? I was to go on as a computer and I worked so good. <laughs> Barbara Jones was passed. 
Okay, Barbara Jones. Yeah, of course, people like Sly and Rabu. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, 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 I'm much interested in the females. Okay, the females. Nadine. Nadine, Nadine Sutherland. Yeah. Um, 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 um. Who are they? Ooh. <laughs> Girl, people like Lady G. Lady G. Yeah. I free her. Um, yes, play a song with somebody who I've done work with sometimes. I've worked on her songs. I've worked on her assistance for the rest. Serene. Okay. Serene. Um, I'm, 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 I'm bored. Ooh. I said Barbara Jones, right? Yeah, you've said Barbara Jones already. Why? I hit a blank. <laughs> Easy. We kind of put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, we went to the start and I went to start reading them out. Eh? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Easy. So now, Pamela Hall, talk to us about how the industry look like those days comparing to now. In terms of the music you are hearing now in Jamaica and across the world, world in terms of reggae and also dancehall. You understand me? Comparing those days to now, how would you say the balance is? Well, back then, and maybe that's why I, I can't call a lot of ladies, a lot of ladies' names. There were very few ladies, really, mm -hmm. back in the 70s. There weren't that many. Um, in terms of ladies, the balance of ladies to men. But the music now is ready. Reggae. Mm -hmm. Like they had mental. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Then they had rock steady. Mm -hmm. And that morphed into reggae. Mm -hmm. And out of reggae came dance hall. Mm -hmm. And in, in all of them, you can see some of the influences of the other genres than before. Mm -hmm. So like when you hear a reggae something, that is from mental. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and then now, our music now started to influence other types of music. So like reggae time, as you can hear from the name, reggae time. Mm -hmm. It influenced there. And I think we have also influenced some of the popular African music now. But of course, we are also influenced from Africa, just in our very being, you know, our rhythm, our sense of music and timing is also influenced by Africa, mm -hmm. our African origins. Yes. But a lot of what you hear now amongst all the popular music, you can hear the dance hall influences, you can hear the reggae influences. And so you have a whole lot of genres and cross genres and mixed genres, which, which is really quite interesting mm -hmm. to, to see, you know. But all those other Jamaican genres are still there also in their pure, pure form. So you will hear mental bands still play. Mm -hmm. And you'll hear people playing ska. Mm -hmm. Which, was, which I love, by the way. I'm absolutely crazy about it. Yeah. It's mm. such an exciting music. Yeah. Then you'll hear, you'll hear the influences of the rock steady. Mm -hmm. That kind of bass line that comes from rock steady. Mm -hmm. so, so you hear all the genres happening. Sometimes you hear them in their pure form. And then you hear the influences. So it's really, really interesting. I'm, I'm glad all the other genres are still there. All right. So now I, I am glad you said that all this music from mento to um, steady rock to skia to all of them um, and to reggae, dancehall, it has 
and African origin and all that. I am glad you said that. Easy. Right. Right. But nobody can ask me anything. We can talk about where we come from, which we are happy to do. And I'm gl I'm so glad that that um communications are increased so that we can link with Africans more. Definitely. You know? Definitely. Right. But I don't want a guy to complain and play my music still. Definitely. <laughs> Easy. Right. <laughs> Use it, but don't claim it. Yes, but, but you know, one thing I always say that when when I meet my Jamaican brothers and they call me African. Sometimes I don't get it because Jamaicans too are Africans, you understand me? Because Peter Todd said, no matter where you come from, as long as you're a black man, you're African. I believe that with my whole being. <laughs> I'm African. Definitely. Definitely. Everybody, everybody doesn't look at it like that. Mm -hmm. Some Africans don't like us saying we're African. Some Jamaicans don't like us saying we're Africans because there's still a bit of that divide. Divide one and divide and conquer. You know? Definitely. And I would have to overcome centuries of brainwashing. So maybe in time, everybody will acknowledge themselves as African with whatever else they are, you know? Definitely. Because as you can see, I'm African and Jamaican. And English, in terms of, in terms of um, nationality. Okay. All right. English, whatever. But, but my identity, in terms of my heritage, African. Definitely. All right. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, um, time is running. But I'm trying to squeeze in a whole lot of things at one time. 40 minutes going into the R2. Easy. Here on Assassin Radio. The show is Yard Settings. And trust me, my name is King Lagazi. Easy. Assassin Radio. Pamela, talk to us. How many albums have you? Mm, about 12, I think. All right. I have, yeah, I have a, a, a dance hall album. I did come with two thousand seven. I have a, I have a jazz album, mm -hmm. just voice and guitar with Ernie Wrangling. Ever heard of Ernie Wrangling? I'm not you hearing it. Ernie, yeah, Ernie Wrangling. Ever heard of him? No, I'm not hearing it. Okay. He is one of the greatest guitarists you could ever listen to. All right. Jazz guitarist, but he was. Very, very seminal in the formation of our music as well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to introduce you to him. Definitely. And yes, I also have an album called Ladies' Turn, which is an album with a group actually mm -hmm. called Kingston Ladies. Mm -hmm. That's Lieber and Keisha, Keisha Patterson and Lieber Hibber. Mm -hmm. That's his cook's daughter. So we did an album together too. And then I have oh yeah, several albums that are strictly solo from her album. Okay. It's about 12 or 13, somewhere around. Yeah. All right, 12 or 13. So um, talking about albums now, I think the albums I have in my catalog you know, sometimes we don't say cat because the cat is too small. So we say lion lag. You understand me? <laughs> <laughs> the, the albums I have in my lion lag is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I have um, Always Love You by Jetstar, um, released by Jetstar. Um, Bet You Don't Know, by, released by VP Records. I have Magic. Released by VP Records, Missing You Baby by Jester, um, Perfidia, you know, CD in 1994. I have the RB and uh, Reggae Hit Style, released by VP Records. I have 
Reggae Hot Shots. You understand me? Released by Jester and also um, Time for Love, released by VP Records. These are the albums I have from Palm Hole. Easy. Okay. All right. I, I'm going to update you. Lion Lad, a little more. Definitely. That would be very nice <laughs> to update it. <laughs> yeah, man. So, definitely. So, um, I don't know, but I'm wondering if artists, you know, link you for collab or you still do backing, you know, vocalists yeah. in terms of harmonies on other songs and all that. Do you still do that? Yeah, man. Wow. All of that. Everything. Music, music, music. All, on all fronts. All right. The, we the, have a rhythm now and then too, you know? All right. All right. The last question I would like to ask you before we wrap it up is the music you are hearing now in Jamaica in terms of reggae, dancehall, across the world. In terms of what is happening those days and now, what would you say about it? Are we are we on the right path, or we are swaying from the path? No man, um, everybody is going to put their spin on something, so it's not going to be exactly like we would do it. But we welcome everyone, man, and. Ah. Some really nice reggae. I hear some really nice reggae from all over the world. All right. And yeah. of course, from Jamaica. All right. All right. Before, a lot of people are asking me to let you sing and you know, all that. And I'm like, wait, no? Easy. <laughs> Before I let you go, this cover is, 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 is kind of one of my favorite. Sad movies, you understand me? It's it's one of my favorite, and I would like you to do us a favor on a sassy radio. Easy. And give us some lines from that. Okay, let's see if I can remember it. He said he had to work, so I went to the show alone. They turned off the lights and turned the projector on. Just as the news of the world started to begin, I saw my darling and my best friend walking. Let me just see here, they are traitors. So I was sitting there, they didn't see. <laughs> And so they sat right down in front of me. When he kissed her lips, I almost died. And in the middle of a color cartoon, I started to cry. Oh, sad movies always make me cry. Oh. Oh, sad movie always make me cry. Easy. <laughs> wow, wow. That My is voice. that is beautiful. Yo, you still the voice is still Chris. Easy. Sweet. <laughs> wow. Thank you, sir. All right, so um I, I, I know that you've been to Kenya, you've been to South Africa, um, and I know that you, you are open for bookings, right? Yes, I am. So if, if somebody want to contact you for bookings or anything, where exactly should they go to? Well, I'll give you my number, but let me give it my manager, right? Okay. It's Errol Wilson. Okay. Write down the number so I won't forget it. Definitely. And it's four, five, three, nine, one, seven, nine. Let me just make sure, because you know, when you have to think about it rather than do it automatically. Definitely. You start saying, you start second guessing yourself. Definitely. 
Mm-hmm. Pam Hoy is making sure that she get the number right. I did say something wrong. <laughs> Nine, four. <laughs> yeah, man. Nine, four, seven, five. Yes, I. Hey, Z. Ella Wilson. Nine, one, seven. Mm-hmm. Four, five, three. Mm-hmm. Nine, four, seven, five. Okay. So, so anybody that wants to book you or anything should contact the manager direct. Yeah. I mean, if if you even call me, I can still put you on to him anyway. No problem. I, yeah, no you problem. have my number. Definitely. Definitely. I have the link, so no worries at all about that. Now, um, in terms of social media, if anybody wants you, how would they get you? On Facebook, Instagram, and all these places. Yeah, that was somebody calling. Easy. Hey, yes. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. If somebody wants to link you via social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and all these places, how would they okay. get you? Mm-hmm. Instagram, Town Hall Music. Mm-hmm. No. Tom Hall, but it's three L's in the in the in the hall. Okay. That is um Instagram. Then there is right Tom Hall Music mm-hmm. and Facebook. Okay. And there's also Pamela Hall on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So what else is said again? Those are the main ones. Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. I joined everything else in the early days, but boy, I can't keep up with them. <laughs> yeah, man. Everything. Yeah, man. Everything is everything and everything good. So you can contact Pam Ho on all these areas that she's mentioned. You understand me? And tr- trust me, get things right. You know what I mean? Everything good and everything is all right. Pamela Ho, before I leave you finally, your word of advice to the female artists across the world. Easy. Yes, repeat that for me, please. I was just... Yes, I'm, I'm saying that before I leave you finally, your word of advice to the female artists across the world. Okay. Learn all you can about the business. Stand strong. You always have a choice. And just put out the music. Mm-hmm. All right. We give thanks and praise for your time and space. Pam Ho for talking to us, giving us all the 411 in terms of what you've done from, you know, the 70s right down to the 80s, 90s, and till now. You're still moving strong. You have a brand new one featuring Muta Baroka. Ladies and gentlemen, and let me just have her honor and play the brand new one featuring Muta Baroka. I would like to say thank you so much, Pamo, for your time and space. Playing the brand new one featuring Muta Baroka. And that one is Hello Africa, right? Well, that's what it says, but that's not their name. But... Call it that. In fact, I may have to make it uh, an alternate. Um, Is it out now? Is it out now? It's not released yet, so you know, say. Exclusive. This is a, yes. Wow. You, you called it at the right time for this interview. De- definitely. In, in, in this, yeah, with this, in terms of this song coming out. Definitely. Definitely. Palmore, thank you so much for your time and space. If anything, Thank you so much for having me. If anything, we will link you forward again and talk to you, yeah? Yeah, man. It's right. been great. Blessings. Easy. Okay.